In the year 1910, Theodore Roosevelt delivered what was one of the most important speeches of his career. It was entitled Citizenship in a Republic, and in it, he outlined the responsibilities of what he termed the good citizen. Roosevelt believed that the average citizen must be a good citizen if a republic is to survive. In light of current social and political situations, not only here in the U.S., but around the world, the ideas Roosevelt expressed in Citizenship in a Republic are even more poignant today than when they were first written. According to Roosevelt, the good citizen must possess two qualities. Firstly, he must have those qualities which make for efficiency. He is useless if inefficient. There is nothing to be done with the type of citizen of whom all that can be said of him is that he is harmless. There is little place in the active life for a timid good man. And Roosevelt was clear that the life of a good citizen was an active life. The man who is saved from doing evil by his weakness and timidity is likewise impotent in virtue and in doing good. Secondly, he must also have those qualities which direct his efficiency into channels for the public good. A man's efficiency must be guided and regulated by a moral sense. If the man works for evil, then the more successful he is, the more he is to be despised and condemned. To judge a man merely by success is an abhorrent wrong, and if the people at large habitually so judge men, if they grow to condone wickedness because the wicked man triumphs, they show their inability to understand that free institutions must rest upon the character of citizenship. The good citizen's efficiency should be directed to the public good, and the good which the average man is most responsible for is his own well-being. The average man must earn his own livelihood. He should be made to feel that he occupies a contemptible position if he does not do so, that he is not an object of envy if he is idle, but an object of contempt, of derision, and of pity. There is a minor, this is a minor point in Roosevelt's original speech, but I bring it up because the idle and the indigent are idolized like never before. We call this idolization reality TV, and the worship of many of these celebrities is an indictment of the present state of our society. This is what Roosevelt was warning against and objecting to. These people should be objects of contempt and of derision and of pity. It is easy to become cynical about the present state of affairs, but Roosevelt warns that the good citizen must not be a mere cynic. The poorest way to face life is to face it with a sneer. A cynical habit of thought and speech, a readiness to criticize work which the critic himself never tries to perform, an intellectual aloofness which will not accept contact with life realities, all these are marks not, as the possessor would fain to think, of superiority, but of weakness. They mark the man who seeks to hide from others and from themselves in their own weakness. The role is easy, there is none easier. But it is not the critic who counts, it is not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasm and great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly. His place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat, Shame on the man of cultivated taste who permits refinement to develop into fastidiousness that unfits him for doing rough work. There is no room for those who profess that they would like to take action if only the conditions of life were not what they actually are. The man who does nothing cuts the same sordid figure in the pages of history, whether he be a cynic or fop or voluptuary. Finally, there is one man in especial above all else that the citizen of a republic should be aware and that is of the man who appeals to them for support on the ground that he is hostile to other citizens in the Republic, that he will secure for those who elect him in one shape or another profit at the expense of the other citizens of the Republic. It makes no difference whether this sophist appeals to class hatred or class interest, to religious or anti-religious prejudice. The man who makes such an appeal should always be presumed to be making it for the sake of furthering his own interest. The very last thing any self-respecting member of a democratic community should do is reward any public man because that public man says he will get the private citizen something to which he is not otherwise entitled, or will gratify some emotion or animosity to which this private citizen ought not possess. If a public man tries to get your vote by saying he will do something wrong in your interest, you can be absolutely certain that if it ever becomes worth his while, he will do something wrong against your interest. And that is a condensed version of Theodore Roosevelt's Citizenship in a Republic.
When was the last time you heard a politician speak like that? I have never. And it is my fault and it is your fault because we do not demand more of our representatives and our elected officials. You, it, it's not enough to merely complain. Uh, if the parties are full of sophists, then you run for office. You be the change. You start a new party. Get in the arena. Mar your face with sweat and blood and dust. And then you have a right to complain. Thank you. And I have posted a link to the entire speech, the entire original speech below. Thank you.